manufacturing, technology, hot topics, and a little bit of tomfoolery. This is the MTD Podcast. Welcome to today's MTD CNC Podcast. Uh, today I've got with me uh, Stuart Whitehead and Joe Reynolds. If you're interested in social media, you really need to carry on uh, listening to this, especially in the manufacturing field. A uh, good place to start, probably. Stuart, welcome to uh, the podcast. Morning, Tell us a little, bit, a little bit about yourself and, uh, and, and Jefferson, as most people will know you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not called Jefferson, uh, which is the first thing. Uh, so every number of years, I established a Twitter feed, which is reasonably popular now. It's got over 30,000 followers. It's uh, at Jefferson underscore MFG, if you're not following nice us. Plug, um, nice plug, <laughs> nice plug. Nice plug. Uh, and uh, so it that started off really as a, an antidote, um, some anger with mainstream media in terms of the way that they were portraying engineering manufacturing um, quite negatively and continue to do so. I mean, Joe's jo a big fan of you. you you've been following uh, Jefferson for some time, haven't you? Yeah, that's where I get all my news from. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, joking aside, it, it's Stuart's account is, you know, quite often first to market with some with some news, new factories, you know, in, increased productivity, whatever it may be. So it, it's... And, and how do you... Wh where does your news come from? How do you the, get it? Because uh, this is the I, big I thing with Jay's social. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we just share. Yeah, copy, we just share Copy it. and paste. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, it's not his personal um, feed, is it? Historically, offline, the activity over the... Uh, yeah, I was involved in recruitment for 20, 25 years, and over that period of time, offline the network of architects, business editors, um, specifiers, industrial land agents, um, people who had a story, um, people who would share that information. Um, I'm using it really for business leads, you know, lead, lead generation, because I needed to know it and know the story and understand the story, make contact with the principles before it was in the public domain. And that network has neatly, it lends itself very well to, you know, breaking news on social media. And, and, and it, no question it works. You've built up a huge following. Uh, what's the secret to that? It, working in a manufacturing environment where often um, there are critics that say, you know, social media, Twitter doesn't work, LinkedIn doesn't work, Facebook doesn't we, work. We get it all the time from we our business, time, don't we? It, yeah. but, it, but it's a myth, it does work. And you are... You are a great example of the success. So how did you get there without giving too many secrets away? No, not at all. I mean, there's, you, you can't expect immediate gratification or immediate return. You've got to play the long game. Um, I think you need to have a um, respect for your audience, as you would do if somebody was buying a newspaper or, or subscribing to a TV channel. Um, you, you, you need to understand what they um, want to read about. You need to review. You're going to make lots and lots of mistakes. You need to analyze what's worked what hasn't worked and so forth some of it could be terminology some of it you know twitter for example is quite a visual medium um we all know that if somebody has a story a mclaren story everyone's going to cover it is trying to get a different image or a different take on why that is important and why why it's newsworthy um and looking behind the story rather than just taking um as red kind of thing this is what the pr person wants to portray so you should portray it um you know, um, with, with, without comment. Um. But you, mu you must have uh, a certain knowledge yourself behind these topics. So, for example, like, you know, Joe, if he was to talk about football, it would be evident that he had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> yeah. 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 And get a following. Yeah. Um, but that, you, you know, your, your background must lead you to be able to, to, yeah, dissect this information and be able to get the good bits out of it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not a job. I mean, I suppose manufacturing has is, is always been a hobby um, as much as anything else. I've got, you know, in... I'm fascinated by manufacturing, um, and you know my dad, you, you know, is an engineer. He said to me when I was 11 or 12, he said, "Stuart, one thing you, you can't be is an engineer because that caused mayhem when I was a kid." And so it's the next best thing, to be honest with him. Probably a frustrated manufacturing engineer. <laughs> uh, so I've, it's not for me. It's not a story or a bit of content. I'm genuinely interested in the people behind it, the company behind it, the economic impact of that factory development, what it's going to mean for the local region export success and SME taking on apprentices it, it's it's born from a love of manufacturing it's 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 not mercenary it's it's passion and do, do you find from engagement because we talk about followers or, or connections it, it's kind of irrelevant that number isn't it it's the actual engagement you get and, yes. and do you find that is there anything you can put your finger on like we find if you add an attractive image that's different to all the other news outlets you get more engagement Absolutely, I think imagery is important. Possibly less so on LinkedIn. It's a different type type of audience. Um, I think you need to um, it, 
Twitter accounts can be quite superficial, less you know, less so on LinkedIn. I think you need to invest the time in getting to know the people behind the accounts, getting to know the people behind the company, meeting them offline, meeting them in real life. I think this kind of disconnect, people think, oh, there's offline activity and there's online activity and never, never the train shall meet. Completely disagree, which is obviously what you guys do at MTD extremely well. And, and the feedback that we get all the time from your content is, it, you know, is is extraordinary really in, in terms of the quality and uniqueness of the content that you, you know that you you, you bring mm. to the market. Um, I, 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 well, that concludes it. today's show. And, <laughs> <laughs> and there's the advertorial. We, yes. we, we got what we paid you for right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, on, on a serious note, on the LinkedIn platform, yeah. this is a big one because it's a hot topic of conversation in our industry at the moment. No question, the last two years, you know, you're, you're finding most, um, a lot of engineering companies creating their own company pages, individuals using their own pages. Our customers are using it. And they often, uh, I think the mistake that they make in a lot of senses is, 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 is their information that they're portraying is to their own audience and not necessarily beyond it. So for example, they'll judge by how many likes they've had or how many comments they've had. But just from their peers and their, and, and their people in their surrounding. And yeah. then what they've not got is out to the further field, which is obviously what, what, what MTD prides itself on, giving you that bigger audience. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I think that's a mistake. Would you agree? Absolutely. I, th I think people are very, um, can be quite inward looking in terms of the content, the tone. The tone's very important. People uh, miss, it, miss or underestimate tone in terms of who you're talking to. I take a very conversational tone on LinkedIn rather than formal. Um, I personally prefer to have a personal account rather than a corporate account because I think, again, you, you're more likely to engage. It's a human-to-human -human inter interaction rather than a corporate interaction. Um, I've tried both and gone back to per, you know personal account. Um, I think you, um, on Twitter, and less so on LinkedIn, but certainly on Twitter, you need to be respectful that you're taking 5, 10, 15 seconds of that person's time to make sure they get something from it in a very short period of time. I think constantly just trying to take people away from that platform and clicking on a URL is not the best thing to do. You need to mix it. Um, and also, if you met somebody in the street and you were a salesperson, you wouldn't walk up to them and shake their hand and say, would you like to buy something? You'd build a relationship. And people need to build a relationship on social media and they need to take a medium-term view rather than just smash and grab. I agree. On the, on the wider social media uh, envelope, if you like, I read somewhere 95% of FTSE 500 companies have lost market share to startups. And why do you think that is? It's because of advertising on billboards, on television, the decline in markets where all the startups, your gym sharks of the world, they're, they're investing in, in social media and, and it's a quicker way of growing. Well, you don't, I mean, any engineering company that's founded now, well, here's a great example. An engineer that's been operating for 35 years got a shocking website that's relying on his customer base that he's worked hard to, to, to build up and uh, you know keep happy. A new company's founded, they have the best website, they've got the best social, um, you know, they use social media channels and that's because they know that they're the avenues that work and they're the quickest routes to these markets, aren't they? But that still doesn't mean you're doing it right. So I'd probably just like to say as well, Stuart, just remind us of how many followers you've got on your different channels. Yes, yeah, it's, it's just around 60,000 now. I mean, um, and like you say, I mean, it, 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 volume is, you know, is one element of it. Engagement's key. And, uh, so how would you quantify your engagement? If you, were, if you were saying, you know, if you were pitching that area, what is the engagement stat? On LinkedIn, it's very easy to, to, to work out. 95% plus are in the UK manufacturing community and quite senior people in the main. And you can get, you know, a very good breakdown on that. Twitter, it's, it's, more, it's more problematic, as we, we both know, because uh, we all know, because, it, you know, some of the accounts can be anonymous and, and so on and so forth. Twitter's had several purges over the last six, 12 months to get rid of some of these false accounts. Um, but all I say to people is 99 point whatever percent of content that we put out there is all been to do with British manufacturing, either STEM apprentices, you know, apprenticeships, STEM engagement, export success, new factories, new facilities. So it's reasonable to expect if people are still continuing to follow you, they're engaged within that community. Um, and, you know, the majority of the large OEMs in aerospace, automotive, rail, follow the, follow the account. So, um, and going back to an earlier point, rather than just relying on what, what's in the public domain, I spend an inordinate amount of time on LinkedIn and Twitter on private messaging and speaking to people or giving them further information if they ask for about you know, the, the content that's being put out there. And it's worth investing and building that relationship. 
on you know private messaging and direct messaging on both both platforms to you know because it builds a different type of loyalty i think that's a big point isn't it, it? <laughs> it's huge you know the, the scattergun approach and we've all done it in the past yeah. well certainly i have where you think crikey i'm done with social media for a couple of days i need to bang some news out there it's not the way to do it it no. really isn't you do need to less is more and it's more about the quality quality than the quantity mm. and absolutely right you know follow people up either in this environment face to face or even via you know a direct message it means so much more than just a tag to, to somebody you may never have well, met. Well, well, our telemarketers actively ring um, our, you know, our, our um, uh, engineering database, and so frequently now they are saying, "Oh, I see, you know, Joe's content, Mark's content, Paul's content, Geo's content, Colin's content on on LinkedIn," yep. and it's becoming all, all, all more common. And that is not just because of our followers have grown; it's just purely because that is what a lot of people are doing. And um, I would want to move this on and say, what about Facebook? Is that something you you participate in or you no, have an um, opinion on? And the, the, there's, going back to, to less is more, I suppose, I wanted to concentrate on, on those two, two, two platforms. Uh, you know, there's different feedback and there's different arguments about, you know, Facebook and so forth in terms of what it can give you, whether it can give you, you know, unique uh, access to, to certain individuals and so forth. And I might be wrong. I've not invested a great deal of time in Facebook. Um, and, um, you know, it's, like I say, essentially the last few years, it's been, you know, LinkedIn, primarily LinkedIn and, and Twitter really. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not in a position Instagram. to comment. The mm-hmm. trialed it. Um, and again, I thought it was just repeat. I didn't think it was, um, I think it was a very similar audience. People were migrating away from Twitter and LinkedIn. So I'm not sure what the additional benefit was. Um, but, you know, that's not to say, you know, um, like I say, um, I might, again, might be wrong quite often, um, you know, but focus on LinkedIn and Twitter. Yeah, I, I think manufacturing probably, we, we say we're five years behind the curve, and that's probably not quite true. It's probably more like 10 years behind the curve, isn't it? But, you know, Facebook, in my opinion, will be, a, you know, a platform we'll, we'll all be using much more. Instagram, not so sure from a news perspective. Would, would you break news on Instagram? I don't know. If I was selling trainers or baseball caps, I'd be on it 24-7 probably. But we're on it as a business. We, we don't see the, the, the benefit as we do of a Twitter or LinkedIn at this stage. Probably a good point to say this. Then a uh, couple of years' time, Stuart, what changes do you see in the way people use their social accounts? Do you, well, still, we'll, do you we'll, see I, more and more engaging? We're working in on something at the moment. that um, I, I think that both LinkedIn and Twitter and others are fundamentally flawed, I must be honest with you. Um, I think that the manufacturing community um, and others, other communities outside manufacturing use them because that's, that's what, what exists at the moment. You know, um, it wasn't designed for purpose. You know, it's not specific to a particular sector or a particular country. Um, so I think it will evolve. Um, I think having this kind of broad platform for, you know, um, for each and every sector, each and every country, um, possibly this kind of globalisation of social media will change. And I think there'll be more micro type platforms um, for industries or, or regions or countries. That's mm-hmm. how I see it going. Um, but ultimately, all, all networked and all connected but more relevant, mm-hmm. pertinent information for that subsector, um, you know, that's Sounds a bit like MTD. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, head of our time. Yeah. But, you know, I, I see it, it's like, again, another statistic, influence marketing spend is doubling, trebling, quadrupling year on year at the moment. So I'm interested to see where that goes, you know, influence marketing within our sector. Okay, it's easy to be, you know, again, selling baseball caps and T-shirts on that, but how does that fit within our sector? I guess, collectively, we are influence marketers, whether we like it or not, but where, how is that going to evolve over the coming years? I'm not sure. I, th- I think the other thing as well is how people and why people use social media. I think, I think historically people have used it because go there and sell a product. Then they're looking, well, go there and sell an idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, one of the things... in going back to my recruitment days is seeing a conversion between marketing and HR in terms of how do you solve or you know or help solve the steel shortages with social media we, we know that we need to engage young people in, in into manufacturing we need to entice them we need to enthuse them we need to inform them with all due respect to a lot of these organizations a 12 year old person is not on your website mm-hmm. they might be on your Twitter feed they might be on your, your LinkedIn profile they might be on Facebook as you said before but they want it in bite size, they want quick, 
relevant information that's easily accessible. And I, you know, so I see websites changing more um, before social media does. To be honest I, with you, I, I agree. They're mm. becoming for a manufacturer of a product that they're becoming less and less relevant. Yeah. Um, if you're not putting up to date news content on that website daily they're almost redundant already if, if we tried to keep our website if we wanted to get our website to get the same volume of traffic as all our social channels we'd be playing a chasing game all the time yeah. and you, you actually think to yourself actually is that game worth chasing because the web platform serves a benefit but the social channels are, 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 are motivated by themselves they're expanding on their own so and i think that's strange where historically people have used you know twitter or, twitter or, or linkedin embed the URL, take people, migrate people away from that. And there is a reason for doing that. But there's also an argument for, well, actually use it in its own right, you know, not just as a, you know, a feeding ground kind of thing for, for your website. Because, you know, and I think people are slowly kind of realising that it, it, you know, and respecting it as an entity in its own right, rather than just purely a channel or a funnel to, you know, to, to, to your website, which most websites, trying to keep them updated, they're, they're certainly never as fresh and relevant as a social media feed, because no. it just can't be. No. You know, it's real time, isn't it, almost, in social, you know, essentially in social media and a website. To change it might take days, might take weeks and so forth, by which time it's out of date anyway, so. Quite. Good stuff, brilliant. Thank you very much for joining us no, today, Stuart. Pleasure, yeah, thank, and, uh, thank you, Stuart. Look forward to, uh, if you just want to tell the, uh, the listeners again your, your um, platform. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. My name is uh, Stuart, no, not Jefferson, and uh, the <laughs> Twitter feed is, um, Jefferson underscore MFG, which is, if you don't know, it's short for manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And what's that, Paul? I, I forget. Oh, God. <laughs> I haven't used it for years. <laughs> <laughs> Keep following us on MTD CNC. Yeah, it's been a great podcast. Thank you very much, Joe. Oh, absolutely. Cheers, Paul. Thanks, Joe.